they've been, well, they've been fantastic to work with, and they have as a core demographic exactly the age group we were going for. So it's been quite good. And of course, now they're, because Ireland is such a core demographic for them, they're now bringing over, and they've brought over a person who will be charged of Bebo Ireland, and who will be looking to do we're working with in terms of doing new production specifically geared towards Ireland and seeing if the advertising base is strong enough for what we do in the UK. This is an example of some of the licensed products that we do. Um, these are mainly coming from the Portugal <coughs> version of the show. In Portugal, the show has run for five years. She's gone from 17 to 21, and alas, as a teen show, she now has to go to college, so we have to wave bye-bye to her. But um, we are giving the diary to her younger sister, Mariana, who will continue on the family legacy and tradition and still keep broadcasting the show. And that is a problem with creating teen formats, which is actually, they grow up. And when they grow up, it's like, half of your audience grows up with them, and then what have you done? You've built a brand, but you can't bring it any further. Uh, the show in Portugal has its own dedicated magazines. It's uh, sold books, it's sold over 350,000 copies, which makes it the number two bestseller in that market after Harry Potter. Licensed products will be done deals with um, merchandise and brands and licensed out the brand. Obviously DVDs and CDs. We've launched a couple of music careers and in the UK we did integrations with Sony BMG. So we were we, we helped launch the Ting Tings who went to number one. We've also done some stuff with unsigned bands as well. And the books part is the interesting part because that's where we're going next. We're about to launch the next couple of weeks that we're doing a four-part book deal for Sevilla in the UK, which we're very happy about. If you can watch it in time, it'll be on the shelves for Christmas. Um, these are some photos of the other Sophias around the world. Obviously, the girl in Portugal who started the world about five years ago before there were social networking sites. Uh, Brazil, which was the version we did last summer, and then Turkey. Germany, who just started doing their pilot through Sony, and uh, Jesse, which I believe is a pilot in the US, and then Chile and Vietnam, where it's been running for two years now. And for us, what we're doing next is we're obviously continuing with Sophia's, which is a brand will keep going and running and running and running. Uh, we're hoping it'll go for the four or five years it's gone in its various other territories. We're starting shooting on Monday on an Ashland's Diary project, which is kind of a other, it's, it's similar to Sophia's, it's fully commissioned by RT young people, so I think are probably one of the few Irish broadcasters who really realise that their audience is just not watching their programmes, that 70% of them are online, and how do you connect with that audience, and how do you grab them back to watching your programmes and your shows? So, it, but unlike Sophia's, it's not a story told in real time, it's based on the variances of the broadcaster, i.e. we know they'll repeat it endlessly. So therefore, we haven't tied it to any specific timetable or dates. Um, and it works slightly differently because they don't have the online capabilities, although we are getting them to partner with people on that. And then Flatmates is a format that we bought last MIP, which is a classic three students sharing an apartment, uh, which we're aiming at an age group of between 19 and 25. And we're in the process of developing that with Sony in the UK and, we'll, and also with Bevo, so we're hoping to bring that in probably November, December. And that's kind of what we do. Are there any questions? Or I can talk endlessly if people want. <laughs> can I just ask you about that point? Uh, young people, is, is that a company uh, within a company? Or what is it? RT is very, it's quite interesting, and it, it's, they can't, their young people's department, which deals solely and utterly with young people's, and does shows like The Den and TTV and all the things between Home and Away and Neighbours, can't commission drama. It doesn't have a remit to commission drama, and it can't commission online media because online media is technically part of the commercial enterprises unit of RT. So for quite a while, they were stuck there wondering, we want to do new media, how do we do it? So I think officially they commissioned us as a series of inserts for a magazine format. Uh, which was the only way they could get around to the legislation that they have. For them, it's groundbreaking in that it's exactly what they're going to use in the next recommissioning procedure and point you and say, this is why we should have a drama budget. And to be honest, it is why they should have a drama budget, because no one's really making any programs for teens. And we find that very much in the UK. There's two extremes. There's Disney, where everyone's happy, happy, and everyone's a princess. 
and then there's skins where everyone's on drugs. <laughs> and there's nothing in the middle. And that's why this show works, because 80 to 70% of teens spend their lives in the middle, and they want something they can relate to and something they feel is like the girl next door. It could be their friend. Uh, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, I wanted to ask you from the perspective of you know, a business person, uh, what kind of challenges did you have? I mean, you mentioned them actually in passing there in getting support from, like, were there government bodies who were there to help you, or did you find it easy to raise capital or to make your pitch? No, there weren't. Um, it, it, for us, I come from a traditional media background, so I'd made feature films and short films and documentaries for broadcasters and all those things, and it doesn't work for me as a business model, because if you're making a feature film, you're asking for a huge amount of cash up front, with very little expectation of how it's going to perform in the market. So you ask for all of this money, you make the film, and realistically you don't know until the first day it hits the film screen if it's going to be a success or not. With new media, and the reason we changed the entire direction of where we were going as a company, we realised that we could start small, we could invest a little, we could ask the people who are our core audience to help us, inform us of how we should be shaping these characters. And then we could use that to build. And suddenly we weren't going into a broadcaster then with an idea. We were going in with a fan base. We were saying, hey, we've got 27,000 fans online watching the show. You should be commissioning us. You should be licensing this product for your broadcasting platform. And it changed how we structured deals because... Suddenly, we weren't forced to give away all the intellectual property to a broadcaster who, realistically, doesn't really know what to do with it. Most broadcasters care about receiving a tape, putting it on, and broadcasting at a time slot. They don't really want to know about the merchandising possibilities or the international sales revenues or how you spin it into an online environment because it's not where their core interest is. Their interest is as a public service broadcaster is just to broadcast. So this allowed us to keep our copyright, to be able to exploit it internationally and to turn this into an international format which could go from country to country, whereas if we'd just been commissioned outright, we wouldn't have had any of the control to mar or ex any of the control or able to control the marketing and the press to be able to do that. Katrina, well done on the, on the RT thing. And I just wanted to add on that one as well because it's an interesting model. I mean, RT as an organisation has problems understanding what the word digital means. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you've managed to get into a section of that company is fantastic. But how are you adop adapting your very well-tried model of merchandising, dissemination through mobile media, through the web, etc.? How are you adapting that to maybe RTE style, if you like? And do you still retain, are you free within that contract to go and do those things yourself? Yeah, it was an important negotiation point for us. and. Uh we kept hearing the word, word, you know, I've never negotiated a contract like this and we've never known. It wasn't them giving us a contract. We gave them a contract and said, this is where you sign. Um, and it, it's worked out kind of okay because, ironically, public service broadcasters are, are almost better equipped for this kind of stuff because they have the radio station, they have the magazine, they have the, broad, the broadcasting platform, they have a, some variation of an online platform. But to try and get all of those people to talk internally is a real struggle and a challenge. So what we did with RTE was we would tell them we would provide the program. We brought in Bebo because they were our main connection and because they're bigger than Google in Ireland in terms of the number of hits that they get. And we sat them down and we said, this is what we want to do. We convinced Bebo to give us media profiles that people normally pay for in terms for cross-promotional activity within RTE. They'll run band competitions for unsigned bands who will be part of the soundtrack. They'll run some nice stuff with RTE Young Peoples. And we then hooked up with 2FM to try and do a spin-off there as well. And we've also just signed a deal with Penguin Publishing, who will do the book based on the series, which will come out for Christmas. So we still, and after that is over, we then control all of the international rights and the format rights. So we're still selling everything with outside, outside of Ireland. All we're doing is we're giving an exclusive window from September through to December for them to broadcast first. So it's hard, but it's not impossible to make it work. How does the advertising work in practice with the union? Is it a product placement or a traditional ads? It's a really good question, and it's um, we went with we went with deeper than product placement because I think the amount of money that people spend on online advertising is is just growing. It's their now companies are now spending more on like advertising online than they are on buying ads on ITV. 
traditional broadcasters have advertised